Okay, welcome to this video on different types of turbulence explained. My name is Neil Shearing and my website is fooeetofear.com. Alright, so what is turbulence? Well, turbulence is basically something that behaves with a chaotic and unpredictable motion. So you can imagine turbulence as the change in the flow of a river as it goes around a rock and meets on the other side. The water would roil with eddies and vortices. It would have a turbulent and chaotic character about it until the turbulence had dissipated and the flow smoothed out again. When we experience turbulence on a plane, the plane is moving through air that has the same qualities as the churning river water. Turbulence happens at the borders of air masses that are moving in different directions. The same patterns of swirling eddies happens to the air at the edges of the air masses as they push past each other. Although the underlying mechanism that generates turbulence is always the same, there are different classifications of turbulence according to how it's created. One of the easiest types of turbulence to imagine is convective turbulence. As the sun heats the ground, the air above it is warmed and rises. That air has to move past other air in order to rise, and at the boundaries between the air masses, turbulent air is created. Normally, such movements of air are not rapid and don't give rise to much turbulence. However, the rising air can also meet weather fronts moving horizontally across the land, and at the point at which the rising air tries to push through the air moving across it, significant turbulence can be generated. As the warm air rises, it cools and rises more slowly and dissipates. However, if the air contains moisture, it can condense into small droplets. As the droplets form, they release heat, which causes the air to rise yet further, causing the droplets to enlarge. Eventually, the droplets fall as rain, dragging air down with them. At that point, you can have warm air masses rising, and air also being drawn down with the droplets. As you can imagine, this creates large amounts of turbulence. For that reason, pilots have several ways to identify storms and rain clouds, and avoid them if at all possible. Convective turbulence is usually only encountered at low altitudes, which means in the early part of a flight or at the end when it's nearing the airport. Clean air turbulence is what most people consider to be turbulence, especially if they have a fear of flying. Clean air turbulence is the type that can happen unexpectedly, and for that reason it makes sense to wear your seatbelt at all times while seated on a plane. Clean air turbulence happens at high altitude and is encountered when the plane crosses between two air masses moving in different directions. Usually that means when a plane crosses into or out of a jet stream. For some routes, particularly from North America to Europe, planes will take advantage of the jet stream winds which can reach 250 miles an hour to get a tailwind and reach their destination more quickly while using less fuel. Of course, that requires entering and leaving the jet stream with a good chance of turbulence. You can check with your airline to find out whether or not the route your plane will be taking will use a jet stream or not. Don't forget to check the return journey too. For the same reason planes make use of the jet stream when going from North America to Europe, they avoid it on the reverse route. When a solid object causes the obstruction of airflow, in the same way as the rock in the river disrupted the water flow, it can generate turbulence called mechanical turbulence. Usually this kind of turbulence is created by objects such as mountain ranges and tall buildings. Normally pilots and route planners will be well aware of such potential turbulence and route the planes around the object. As mountains and tall buildings don't move, it's not a problem to go around them. The final type of turbulence is called wake turbulence and is caused by the planes themselves punching a hole through the air and disrupting it. Of course the plane doesn't actually create a hole but it's a good way to imagine what happens to the air as it's moved apart by the plane and then comes back together much like the water in the river. Wake turbulence is usually only a problem near airports and then it's much more of a problem for light aircraft following heavy ones than it is for commercial airliners. The simple solution to wake turbulence is that air traffic control keeps planes well apart which allows the turbulence to dissipate. For more information on turbulence you can take a look at our Kindle ebook Fear of Turbulence which contains everything you need to know to overcome any anxiety related to turbulence. You can also take a look at our website fooeetofear.com and I've linked here the FAA fact sheet on turbulence. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video useful.